Great to talk to you, and uh, and uh, we have a little interference in thunderstorms here, so I hope we can get through, because it's very important that I get your reaction to the announcement today that the president is extending the talks with the Iranians, and it's no longer anytime, anywhere inspection, Senator Cotton. It's tight monitoring. What do you read into this? Hugh, the uh, actual content of the deal is more important than a six-day extension in the conversation. And the issues on the table now, such as the tightness of the inspections or the speed of sanctions relief or whether Iran will disclose its weaponization uh, work in the past on its nuclear program, simply highlight all the things on which the West has already conceded. We're not talking about whether Iran will keep its uh, uranium, keep its centrifuges, keep its underground fortified bunker Porto, because we already conceded on all those things. We just continue to grant concessions, and Iran continues to pocket them and demand more because they clearly know that the United States wants this deal worse than they do. Carly Fiorina just said on this program, Senator Cotton, that of course President Obama will collapse. And But if he collapses before July 9, you only have 31 days. If it goes to July 9, if I understand the law, you get 60 days. Can you muster enough opposition in the United States Senate to defeat this deal in the next month? That's to be decided. I believe that Republicans will uniformly oppose the terms of the bill that are currently on the table. If the president does give a signing bonus of tens of billions of dollars to Iran at a time when it still is the worst state sponsor of terrorism and is fomenting unrest throughout the Middle East, and we collapse on the demand for any time, anywhere inspections to include Iran's military facilities, and we uh, don't insist that Iran discloses weaponization work, I can't imagine that we won't have many Democrats in the Senate voting with us to block a very bad, very dangerous deal from going forward. All right, let me ask you about the second breaking news of the afternoon. The president has announced that an embassy will open tomorrow in Havana. Carly Fiorina just said that unless the Congress votes to authorize that and fund it, she will close it on her first day in, in a, a Fiorina administration. I hope other Republicans make the same commitment. What do you think of the president's unilateralism here? What you see in Cuba on a small stage is what we might see in Iran on a grand stage. The president, uh, without really anything in return, has overturned decades of bipartisan policy designed to isolate the brutal, repressive Castro regime. Uh, we should not be opening an embassy. We should not be sending ambassadors there. We should not be normalizing relations. We should be standing with the Cuban people and protecting the interests of the American people in isolating and ultimately overturning the Castro regime. Uh, Senator Cotton, the, the reception given to former Israel ambassador to the United States, uh, Michael Oren's book, Ally, has been caustic and uh, almost a silencing by the administration and its allies of a man who stood by them resolutely through the hardest times. He always said diplomatic things about President Obama. What does that tell you about the relationship right now between Israel and the United States? Well, the relationship between Israel and the United States is and always will be strong because the relationship between the American people and the Israeli people is strong. But clearly, President Obama, based on Ambassador Oren's book and many other reports over the years, is always quick to find the, uh, any kind of slight with Israel, always quick to highlight whatever he believes uh, Israel's misconduct is, yet always quick to forgive Israel's adversaries like Iran. Uh, the attack in Tunisia this past weekend, it was, uh, it was swallowed up by the news that convulsed the United States out of Charleston and elsewhere, uh, and the economic collapse in, in Greece and the Puerto Rican bonds. But I was talking with Governor Perry about it in the first hour. No one on that beach was armed, Senator Cotton. I, how long until this sort of movie opens, sadly and tragically, in a theater near us in the United States, not from a domestic terrorist as who acted in, in Charleston, but from a jihadi? Unfortunately, the threat to our homeland is as grave as it's been in many, many years. Uh, you've had Mike Morrell on your program who has said he would not be surprised if the Islamic State attacked us next week on our homeland. Uh, it's a grave threat, uh, and it's some of the consequences of a failed counterterrorism policy in Iraq and, uh, at first and now in Syria as well. As Mike Morrell has said, if you don't keep pressure on groups like al-Qaeda and the Islamic State, then they re uh, regain the capability to protect power and ultimately strike us in the United States. But are, is the country serious about this? Because uh, the marriage decision got a lot of ink, the Obamacare decision got a lot of ink, and, and if you have comments on those, I'd welcome them. But I keep going back. We're one day away from 
uh, everything being wiped off the front page except the Tunis-like incident here in the United States? Hugh, I, I certainly think the American people are serious about it. And as I'm traveling around Arkansas this week, uh, again, national security is at the forefront of our Kansas minds. And these kind of terrorist attacks is at the forefront of their minds. As we have here heightened warnings with the upcoming Fourth of July holiday. Uh, I can't say that's always the case with uh, the Washington elite, though, uh, that they are as focused on these national security threats as they should be. But I certainly am because the people of Arkansas are. Let me draw you in then to the filibuster versus repeal debate. Uh, Senator Cruz made a, a very robust defense of the filibuster, even if parts of Obamacare could not be removed via re reconciliation. Scott Walker, Carly Fiorina, Rick Perry, Jeb Bush, all the governors say, to heck with the filibuster, let's get rid of Obamacare. Senator Cotton, it's sort of unfair. You've only been there six months, actually, in the United States Senate. But what do you think about the merits of, of the Reed rule being invoked to get rid of Obamacare? Well, Hugh, uh, I, I would not favor it for the time being. Uh, we would gain very little by overturning the filibuster as it relates to legislation, not just nominations, at the time, for the time being, because President Obama would still have the veto pen. Now, that would be different if we elect a Republican president next year, as I think we will. On the one hand, I think it's a good thing that our government uh, respects minority rights and gets minority input, and the Senate is the traditional location for that. On the other hand, the filibuster is not a constitutional practice. It's not written in the hearts of man, as the equality of man is, uh, according to the Declaration. It is a tool that is developed over time to try to develop broad-based consensus. Uh, but there are other tools that the Senate can use to respect minority rights and ensure that the Senate remains the place it has been for two centuries that respects all states and the equality of states and gives the minority of any party, of any region, of any viewpoint, some, in, some input, uh, but, it, but it is not you know, a constitutional practice that could never be reconsidered. Yeah, that, that's what I would love to hear. I would love to hear that, that the leader and uh, the whip actually convened an honest and, and forthright debate about the merits, because it's not constitutionalism. It's, it's extra constitution. And it might be useful. It might be more necessary, and, but it's an open question. And, and you know, Hugh, the, the Senate was designed in part to ensure that the cool and deliberate sense of the community prevails, as James Madison said. And it has a constitutional design, the six-year terms that are staggered every two years, the equality of the states, and so forth. Um, and on top of that constitutional design is developed a set of formal rules, as well as informal customs. And those all reinforce the design. But that doesn't mean that any one of those rules or any one of those customs is a constitutional practice itself. And in fact, uh, Far from being ahistorical, uh, when you say the filibuster is not a constitutional practice, for most of the first half of our country's history, filibusters were unheard of in the Senate. Interesting, interesting. Senator Cotton, I'll return to this with you another time. Uh, have a great Fourth of July. I won't be here next week, but I look forward to talking to you when I return.